Yeah, so let me let me do everyone a favor uh, that is watching. Um, some of the testing for biological aging is still in the works. Um, some of it needs some things fleshed out. I know that the last time I sat through a presentation, they said like all the old clocks are out and the new clocks are in as far as epigenetic aging. Epigenetic aging clocks test epigenetic reprogramming therapies. Telomere tests measure telomere length, lengthening or shortening. Do not use an epigenetic test to tell me your telomere age, okay? Don't do it and don't use an epigenetic test to sort out anything but DNA methylation. So when we look at senescent cells, we wanna look at a, a test that looks at senescent cells. When we look at blood markers, we want to take consistent blood markers over time to test what's happening. So the the whole rage about one test being able to do it all, it can't. We have looked at over a hundred patients and the data does not, they it just doesn't cor correlate. So you can have a very biologically young telomere length when you do a telomere test that does not associate so much to your biological age on your DNA methylation. If you do a gene therapy that resets your DNA methylation and you catch one of those cells, you are going to have an extremely young DNA methylation test. So I think that... Um, there's a lot to flesh out in the industry, and a lot of it is based in fads. Um, I've seen just recently what's entering again, which is great, is uh, senescent cells. Uh, they've entered the spotlight again of uh, the conscious mind in the media, and that's fantastic because they're definitely a hallmark of aging, and so we need to deal with them. And then uh, immune senescence and immune system uh, having some control over aging. Uh, and this, this sort of, I have a, a company that's working on that. They started in cancer and now they're moving towards looking at uh, epigenetic, not epigenetic, but, but cellular aging in the immune system and reversing it to reverse aging. And this is really exciting uh, because that's kind of a new angle that uh, is being looked at, but remember, you're gonna to have to reverse all of these things. And that's, uh, I think that, you know, keeping people's eye on the prize of all the things that we need to look at is the most important. So I've had epigenetic tests that, or DNA methylation, you might wanna call them tests that say that I'm in my twenties. And I've had them that say that I'm in my forties. And I don't think that they're, that, it's indicative of a measurement until I do an DNA methylation reset. So uh, we're looking at those therapies, but I'm working with a company that's actually doing those chemically, which is pretty cool. And uh, this is a, a set of chemicals uh, that they believe is resetting the DNA methylation in cells. And so I'll tell you more about that as that company gets off the ground. But this is kind of interesting for me because I have been a gene therapy focused person for a long time. And so entertaining a company that is using small molecules to reset aging at the epigenetic level is like, wow, I didn't picture that. <laughs> But you can do it with the gene therapy. It's just the gene therapy, it's hard, hard to target a lot of cells in the body um, at, with, with each gene therapy, and that would be quite expensive right now. Um, so a small molecule approach is something you can turn on and off, and, and so that just kind of made sense to me. If people go and they try to take one test to measure aging, you're never really gonna know what you've done, right? You might think, oh, oh no. It doesn't look to have changed, or it looks to have changed a lot. You got to measure them all. Yes. So, the, well, there was a, a number of things in there that I would like to unpack. But uh, yeah, I mean, we, we we spoke to the person, Dr. Dr. Louts, who was 
yeah, who was doing like glycan age. And he says like glycan age is not correlated very much with epigenetic age. I mean, it's, yeah, th there does not seem to be like one age. And no, you got to do your glycan age. You got to do your DNA methylation. You got to, and then what th the thing is, is that we have to change the paradigm of disease and that's really hard. So we've, we've tried to, as an industry say, okay, here's the problem. There's aging and then there's all these diseases that shoot off of it. And then what we do is in industries, we typically used to uh, look to treat symptoms of those diseases. So if you had cardiovascular disease, um, then they would go after um, LDL and they would, they created statins. Okay. So you're treating a symptom, but it's of a symptom. But the reason why we're having a hard sell here, <laughs> which makes sense is because, okay, we had the symptoms of the diseases over here. Then we've got the diseases. Then we go back to aging but aging itself is complex and then aging branches out and we have, well, we have 12 agreed upon hallmarks of aging. We'll probably have more. Um, not all of them will need to be treated in, independently. Some of them might affect each other. For instance, one of the hallmarks of aging is telomere attrition. You, you'll go in, you'll get a myriad of tests. They'll say you have short telomeres. Let's lengthen those telomeres and then see what else you have. Oh, you also have DNA methylation issues. Let's give you a therapy for that. Let's put you on these pills or let's give you this gene therapy. Oh, you also have stem cell depletion. So we're going to need to take your, your stem cells. We're going to need to culture them and we're going to need to expand them and genetically modify them so they're not old and put them back in your body. It sounds complex, but actually it's a way simpler way to deal with all of the diseases. And it actually takes you from aging to targeting them all. And uh, so I, what I believe is that today we have cardiovascular disease, COPD, dementia, et cetera, et cetera. We have these diseases of aging, but in the future we'll have telomere attrition, mitochondrial dysfunction, you know, cellular senescence. We'll, we'll have a host of maladies that are actually treatable and those will keep you from getting the diseases of aging. I hope that makes sense. It's like kind of, it's, it's such a big shift that I don't think we can do it at one time and we still have to prove every therapy consistently works.